in man, the but I, I I have to give it to you. My still my favorite one is that probably that flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, man. It just had like as far as like just play through, play yeah. value, like just play all the way through. It, it feels like he he carried on where Pop left off in terms of being able to do both of those things seamlessly. He was so freaking talented. I remember the second part. Like it was this was the first time I introduced to Marilyn Manson. I don't know about you, but you remember like that was Damien part two on there. Mm -hmm. And it had like uh uh the snake, the rat, uh, the cat. The cat in the but yeah, that was Marilyn Manson. I was like, oh, how in the world? Like, who is this dude tying up with like this this different side of rock? You know, even for that time, the more darker side of rock. And, and you know, but that song with him and him fits perfectly, you know what I mean? It's classic. To be mm -hmm. able to be that believable, hop into those blockbuster, because at the time, those were blockbuster movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and to be able to do it seamlessly was just, just an amazing, amazing thing to see it. And then that's what made him iconic, you know what I'm saying? Because he got to do several movies in that, that short time period, talking about using your time purposely, I mean, purposefully, you know what I mean? It, it was just an amazing thing to see. Uh, like I said, man, I... Welcome back, people. This is Don't Sleep on the Couch Podcast. I'm your boy, Mr. Prez, and with me always. It's your boy, Cash, a.k.a. Exec P. What's happening, good people? Yeah, this is going to be a real, real short episode, man. We, we're going to definitely give our thoughts on Dark Man next. Rest in peace. Uh, towards the tail end of last week's episode, we were hoping and praying that he would make it, but ultimately... He did not, and God had a, a higher purpose for him, which he's always had. So definitely going to touch on that. We've had some time to deal with it. We're still dealing with it, but we're going to try our best to try to cover down on what we remember in, in regards to just BMX raising us and being part of our lives since we were teenagers. All right, so, yeah, as, we, as you said, last episode, we talked about uh dmx and you know he was going through his thing and it's like it was kind of sleeping out a little bit like uh that wasn't gonna make it and uh i i think it was at that time it was like we had the false scare where everybody was just like hey yeah he's dead that, that yeah. one person shot out the text or whatever and then they did some recanting but it seemed like it was just to allow the family to get the news first before everybody else because kind of, no matter how you look at that that's kind of messed up if you send out on social media i, I would hate to find out about my loved one uh you through social media versus here in front of family and stuff like that you got to give these people time it's like that just ain't right and whoever did that man come on man like be, be a little bit more sensitive to the situation i know the world needs to know but uh at least let them get get the notice out to the family before you just spill it and, and you know man had a lot of kids and uh <laughs> you don't want you want them to reach out to all of them before <laughs> Yeah, they find out via social media because that, that's something that they probably wouldn't live down with those family members for a while. Uh, but getting on to what uh, DMX was and what he meant to us, uh, to me personally, uh, I would say, man, as a teenager, like you said, I just remember that uh, 90 was 98? Yeah, 98 vividly uh, when those first two albums dropped and <laughs> This was right around the time that I was rolling in my vehicle. I'm dating myself and everything. This I, I got my whip and these things came out. So, you know, I was rolling. <laughs> we was definitely hitting on this, uh, the DMX. And first it was with It's Dark and Hell is Hot. And that was like May of 98. You had 18 tracks on it and straight fire. I thought like that album was classic to me. Started off with that intro. Then you had the Rough Riders anthem. You had Damien on there. You had How's It Going Down, Get At Me Dogs, Stop. Those are just the hits. And all the uh, B-sides were, were, were fired to me as well. But those are the ones I know that everybody's not going to know off the top of their head. Like, And for for that album at the time, like that's, that's that was hitting on all cylinders. And, you know, 
CD time it ain't the music. Uh, it ain't the Spotify and all that. The iTunes there at that time. So when you went and brought a CD, you made sure you listened to that thing. So you knew that thing through and through. You probably knew more verses than <laughs> than you would like to admit. You know? How about you on that? And as for me, man, it all began because you know X from New York, of course, younger. So it all all began with my pops, man. Uh, I, I don't know if I told the story, but like. As far as the locks and 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 bad boy and all that and DMX, like I first, my pops used to sell mixtape CDs as a side hustle, and everybody in the neighborhood knew he did. Um, but when he first brought some random mixtape around, it was the locks, and then it had DMX all throughout that thing, and that's when I first heard of him. And then next thing you know, he's on the Ronjies, the Clues, uh, MVs a little while later. And just cut master C and just numerous DJs. And you knew he was gonna be great. And you see him in all the ciphers, and then all of a sudden, get at me dog comes out. And I'm like, whoa, this this dude is gonna be a star. You know what I mean? And just countless mixtape cuts. Like I've been this whole weekend to try to get through it. I've been trying to just listen to the music and soak it in. And like you said, Prez, I remember every last verse on every app like the first three albums i can still yeah. recite them i can still yeah. recite them and it doesn't matter you know you know when you know an album so well you adding your own ad libs to it <laughs> sliding in things that relate to you and um and that's kind of how I, I was doing it and then i was like man I, I really had to tap into one of my old homeboys from um growing up friends and it's going to be funny, man, and sorry for being long-winded, but this is just the easiest way to get through it. So um, basic training, I showed up to basic training in my Rough Riders t-shirt. <laughs> now, oh, Prez, man. Yeah, Prez, you could only, I'm, I'm trying to get the picture for my homeboy, Renee, but so you can only imagine at that time when we wasn't as uh, sensitive to certain things and pretty much more moronic and things we would say as a culture. So you can only imagine what my my basic training instructor said when I showed when up with a Rough Rider T-shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was jokes for yeah. days, but I he mean, I wore thug. that T-shirt. He was the number one thug out there. Huh? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, and this is in what, 01, 01 when I went to basic training. So this is three years after X had came out and X was on top of the world, movies, you name it. He, he, was, he was doing it. So, I mean, that's... He was a childhood hero to me, man, as far as putting prayer in song. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even go into church like that, but just hearing that from a dude as real as is that being able to be that vulnerable, seeing him cry on stage, uh, seeing him to seeing him perform at Woodstock, it's just crazy. It's just crazy how much he touched in that short run is probably arguably one of the best runs that you any rapper has ever had in a Three to five years span. I will say, like, I don't remember it, like it happening before him. It may have, but I don't remember it, it happening. Like how he dropped that same year, six months, basically like six to seven months apart from each other, you know, and you come out with another banger, like all surefire. And that was like uh flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. But like, hey, I need to walk it back a little bit. One thing that I'm trying to uh say about DMX that that set him apart, like when he burst on the scene, he burst on the scene, man. He had that rawness, he had the energy to go with it that was above all this. And he had the the vocal talent that would just set him apart from anything else. And his ad libs, the dog barking, all this sort of stuff, just you know, everything <laughs> it created that whole unique style for him. You know what I mean? And it just cleared a lane that was just set just for him. You would hear certain songs at that point, you like X need to get on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you got to hear X on that. You know, yeah. just the energy that he would bring. And I would have keen that to somebody like I know that down south. That's how Misko was for me. Just the energy that he brought to a track just changed up the whole mood of everything. And that's that's the same way it was with DMX. Yeah, and you got to realize this, this is right after. And I love this era. Like a lot of people shit on it, but this is right after the shiny suit era with Bad Boy and them, um, which I still. Love a lot of them songs from that yeah, era. You, you, you big time Mace, like yeah, big time Mace fan, big time Mace fan. So you can't tell me nothing wrong about that era. But before that era, it was the grimy shit. It was the Wu Tang. It was 
EPMD and, and, and cats like that, uh, Dog Pound, Death Row, like that, that was like right in that mix. And then for X to come back in the middle of all of the, the more lighthearted stuff being played was just like a dope thing. You know what I'm saying? And mm. people really resonated with him because not only did he speak truth to words, but he also was relatable. Prez. He was relatable on all levels. We all felt like we was X. Whether you was going through the things that he was going through in his personal struggles or not, you could relate to somebody like that. Either you had a family member, a friend, cuz whatever. You you could relate to his struggle and just just be like, wow, he's being so damn vulnerable at this point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and especially and like where his struggles like on like Damien, uh, you know, everybody has that little like hard do I do the right thing, wrong thing, you know, that inner struggle and just the way he played that out in the song, man. And over multiple albums, just played that, continue to play that story out, man. It was just, I think that's like, that's like top of it for me. Just like that, that story on that, that Damien and stuff like that, just how he done played that out. Cause it was on, like I said, it's it dark as hell is hot. Uh, it was on there, the first little piece of it. And then on the, I remember the second part, like it was, this was the first time I introduced to Marilyn Manson. I don't know about you, but you remember like that was Damien part two on there. Mm-hmm. And it had like uh uh the snake, the rat, the cat. The cat the but yeah, that was Marilyn Manson. I was like, oh, how in the world? Like, who is this dude tying up with like this this different side of rock? You know, even for that time, the more darker side of rock. And, and you know, but that song with him and him fits perfectly, you know what I mean? And it's classic. Yeah, yeah, first two albums for sure, classic. I mean, three, uh, man, and, man. And but I, I, I had to give it to you. My still, my favorite one is that probably that flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Man, it just had like as far as like just play through, play yeah. value, like just play all the way through. My my the B side, my like N word. Uh, bring bring your whole crew. Ain't no way we don't give up. Keep your head. Uh, keep you keep your the hardest. Uh, coming from with, with Mary J. Blige, perfect track. Uh, it's all good. The old man featuring Marilyn Manson. You got Slipping, No Love for Me, Blackout. Man, I'm, I'm, you, can, you can name just, the whole album. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. I mean, they, they dope. I mean, I love that album too. But if I had to pick, uh, it would be As Dark and Hell is Hot. And for the same reasons, intro fired. And you, you come in with all the other joints. I mean, I, he had a song for every single mood. He had the like, come on, man. Uh, how's it going down? That's my shit, man. You know, I'm a ladies' man at heart when I was yeah. younger. <laughs> so you know what I mean. I couldn't relate to what he was saying as an adult, but as you got older, that song aged like fine wine, man. It was raw and, and to the point. You know what I'm saying? It was on some old player shit. Very disrespectful. But it was where he was at <laughs> at that point. And I love that shit. I loved ATF. Stop being greedy. Yo, it felt like stop being greedy when I be on my fake gangster shit. Riding through the hood, like, you know, like or on the train. You know, you wasn't no tough. I wasn't no tough guy. But stop being greedy just made you. It just put you in another zone, man, wherever, wherever you was at. And I know a lot of cats that play sports and shit like that to what X was. You know what I mean? Party up. Uh, it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy that you know he's gone, man. But I, I ain't no rapper at all. But I know uh, in a high school time frame, for I was rapping that Rough Riders anthem all the way through. Oh, I know. all the way through, all the way through. It should probably. I think it was taught in like fire drills in school. Stop, <laughs> drop. You know what I mean? Like for real, for real. You know, but really, really, man. What I was trying to say is like initially after being selfish and being like, damn, you know, another legend gone, one of our legends, and it hits close to home because we grew up with his music. On the flip side, the demons he was battling, the things yeah. that he would go through, and and when seemingly it would look like he would be great. I mean, you saw him on Drink Champs. You saw him, saw him in the verses just enjoying life and getting to receive those flowers, which was a beautiful yeah. thing to see, but then also you would see times when he wasn't on 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 top of his 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 game as far as just with everything that he was going through. Lord, 
who knows what it what it was. But yeah, I think Nori asked him a question on Drink Champs, and he pretty much said that if he if he died right now, you know, he'd pretty much be happy that he lived a good life. You know what I mean? That he pretty much said, "I lived a good life." If he was to die right now, and that that's the only thing that gives me solace in this point with what every, everything that he went through is just that his soul is at ease. You know yeah. What I mean? And I, I was telling you this last week, man, on him, like, it just feels like, uh, I'm unfortunate that it happened and it happened earlier, but the performance that we just had with him, it's not like, it feel like he gave us a book in, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It felt like we was there and we can remember that, that, that last celebration with him, you know, remember from that and it's unfortunate, but like, I know a lot of them just, you don't you don't hear from these people from a while, and then it's like going back. Oh, this person passed. You know what I mean? But just with everybody celebrating his music just a few months ago, you know what I mean? And then go out. It's it's it helps a little bit, in my opinion. It helped me a little bit. You know, I got that nice book in, like on on that, like where everybody, you know, that East and West Coast, no matter what, everybody was appreciated. He was the most worldwide appreciated. Yeah, yeah. Know, no matter all the crazy stuff he'd have been through in all his life, nobody was bringing that up. And it was just like, oh, this this DMX, you know what I mean? Just like he had that last celebration. That's, like your, that's, that's the way what I'm getting at. Like, I've had family members with those troubles. You know what I mean? I still love them. No matter what. I still, you know, whenever they need something, I'm still there. They may go through this shit and I may want them to get off drugs or you know what whatever they're going through and in in this case what i'm talking about personally is is drugs but at the same time you still love them through it and that's still your family and that's how dmx felt like this yeah. this is still your family with all of his imperfections that got nothing to do with what he gave us as far as the music and we'll always we'll always be able to have that and i think when you when you die i think that's all i kind of want you know what I mean? Is my legacy to for people to feel like, you know, I have something to pass on as far as my in my memories, or did I do good things by them, or did I help somebody along, and did that in in turn help them help somebody else? You know what I mean? And and music is a powerful powerful thing, and and the X definitely did that right for you and I, yeah. for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, so we talk talk on the music, but uh. uh the movies as well, like how he dabbled up in there and went and broke in that era, especially for like one of the the, the classics, Belly. You know what I mean? Oh it's part man, of the most that. terrible, most terrible acted movie. If you ever go back and watch it now, but back then, <laughs> man, wow, it was like wow, not oh X. It was just, it was amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you had um Method Man in there. You know what I'm saying? Like. This was just like them at their worst in acting, but it was like the best thing ever. If you, it was like we got time. to see how all rap stars on that, so that that's all that really Nothing, mattered. You know what I mean? Then the way Hype Williams shot it, you know yeah. what I mean? That just like the videos and stuff like that. This was just Which, extravagant. I don't shit. think maybe they're gonna give them credit for. It. I mean, I know a lot of people that steal. That's a JJ Abrams style that they steal right now with all the lighting and stuff. Now I'm going off on a tangent, but that's the Hype Williams. You know what I mean? Like he had all that going on, the way he shot the camera. And the lighting and stuff come out. Go back and watch that movie, then go go watch a JJ Abrams movie and tell me he ain't steal that shit from. Uh, but then you like you said, like these was just like hood classics and just like the stuff that we like it. The, the acting wasn't always top notch, but there was great movies. And I always thought like Cradle to the Grave and Romeo Must Die was in that that category too with Jet Li. You know, just good action films and that you can sit back and watch. And the character that he played was perfect for those for those type of movies. I love watching those. So, yeah. Yeah, Thank same for that. same here. Same here. I enjoyed the movies. I planned on pulling up one of them and just, you know, watching them with my kids and just like, you know, with my oldest kid because he'd he'd get it. You know what I mean? And just say like, hey man, this dude did it all, and it, it feels like he he carried on where Pop left off in terms of being able to do both of those things seamlessly. He was so freaking talented to be mm-hmm. able to be that believable hop into those blockbuster because at the time those were blockbuster movies you know what i mean yeah and and to be able to do it seamlessly was just just an amazing amazing thing to see it and then that's what made him iconic 
You know what I'm saying? Because he got to do several movies in that, that short time period talking about using your time purposely, I mean, purposefully, you know what I mean? It, it was just an amazing thing to see. Uh, like I said, man, I, I got so man, like, like I think you said so it in the perfect man, iconic man. He's he's up there. He's in the hip hop top echelon up here. If you say anything different, I'm probably gonna smack the shit out of you. But, yeah, uh, there's, 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 <laughs> no, I don't want to talk to you no his more. His name comes up in top ten, regard wherever you you plant him is where you plant him. He top ten, no matter what. I don't I don't care who you are. You could be from Alaska all the way to China, all the way to Afghanistan. It's it's a fact. It's a fact. He's in there. He got the catalog. I don't know what other rapper has four to five joints album wise that's gonna stand up with DMX five. If if you just put five and five, I mean the only person is you know only two people you probably could say or three Nas Jay maybe Scarface. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The the rest is debatable. The rest is yep. debatable. So that had that many albums that we that had that many that yeah had. that had that body of work the way you could be like I I got to talk about these five because yeah. how many other rappers have five joints? It's not a lot. It's not a lot. So like I was saying, man. Yeah, I don't know if you whoever's watching this and and whatever if you having a tough time getting through this. All I my last words were probably be is just just celebrate him man and, and and just listen to the music watch the movies um just just rejoice in the fact that he's at peace at peace knowing what you know about dmx just rejoice in the fact that he's at peace man and, and that's what that's the best way i'm gonna learn how to how to deal with it man uh it, it's kind of weird not weird but i always was one of those guys where i was like ah oh, you celebrities these people you know, feel this way over celebrities and whatever the case may be. But it wasn't until I got to this age to where it's like you start to realize your own mortality. Mm -hmm. and, and then you start to realize like, damn, this life, life is short, man. Life is short and you got to live every day like it's your last. And that's another thing with X, man. In, that, in rapper years, <laughs> He lived it, it. You know, he lived it up with all the stories you've heard over the years from uh, the backstage stuff to Irv Gotti to um, like little stories they would tell Rough Riders camp and, and things like that. Like, you know, that man lived a full life and wherever he went, X was X. So, man, he was grimy. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> so many stories, man. Like, I, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Hey. But I, I do want to put it out there, man. I don't know who these people are and what it is, but it's like you ever disrespect you know, like somebody like that in my presence, man. We we don't respect for a good time. You know what I mean? Because uh, I've I seen like the comments online and like he was this, he was that and stuff like this. Uh, obviously, people like that, y'all ain't really had nobody else around you that went through some things you don't really understand. Like, Addiction is addiction, no matter if it's alcoholism, whatever, you know what I mean? Like you, you have your ups and downs and like people gonna have their troubles. And if you ain't if you out there quick quickly saying that, I feel like there's a lot of young cats that's saying that too, man. Just like you ain't live life enough enough to know like <laughs> everything's gonna take you up and down and you it's how you navigate through it. It's a little harder for some than it is for most, you know? Exactly. Well said, Prez, well said. Uh, like, like I said, man, once again, uh, rest in peace to DMX, rest in power. Um, you'll always be with us. Thank you for the music. Um, you know, prayers to his family who continues, who have to continue to get through this and, and deal with the loss of a husband, a father, and a family member. Um, thank you for giving him to us for all these years because he touched a lot of people. So hopefully you guys can can breathe easy with that, knowing how many people who love him out here and 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 feel like he's a family member as well. So. Uh, you know, one last time, man. Word up. X. Can we go? Mm -hmm. More episodes. Catch us on Apple Podcasts, Castbox, Spotify, SoundCloud, and wherever else you listen to your favorite podcasts.